right, so part two. Here we go. I'm about to get on with this shit. You know what I realized? A lot of people actually like Booker T. Well, Gold Book or Book Dust match against Evolution. They actually thought that was a good match. So maybe I was just really drowsy and I didn't like appreciate it. But I kind of doubt that too because I was. I woke up and I was groggy and I actually liked Jericho's and Shawn Michaels' promo. For starters, we got to keep in mind that at this point. Hold on. Let me reposition myself. At this point. Jericho just got into the main event scene in 2001. So, here he is in 2003. Essentially getting into a dream match. This is a fucking dream match. This is something that you can think, you know what would be a great fucking match? If you put these two guys that are a little different but a little similar against each other. And that's what they fucking did. They had... Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho. So I felt like this is a high point for Jericho because it means that he's going... He's not just going for the main event. He's going for a special attraction in a way. He's going for something that people have been dying to see. And you know what? This promo is really good because it illustrates Jericho's mic skills. Jericho at this point, he, he's the man. He's the fucking man. He's doing a promo with Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels is quiet for most of this, but you can see, like, his expressions, some of what he says, how his expressions change, how he reacts, the look on his face, especially his eyes. They, they tell a fucking story. This was basically about how Shawn Michaels kind of based his career in the beginning, well, not Shawn Michaels. Chris Jericho based his career in the beginning off trying to be like Shawn Michaels. Him being one of Shawn Michaels' biggest fans. And then how eventually Jericho ascended so many accolades and started trying to become himself. How he's trying to identify with himself. And at this point we're thinking, alright, we can sympathize with Jericho right now. But this is the brilliant part. Then Jericho says... That's why when I beat you, you'll have to admit that you're better than me. And this is where we think, okay, I can sympathize with him. Oh, but this is where it cuts off. This is where it's like, no, he's going too far. He's trying to make Michaels worship him. He's trying to take his pride out and say that he's better than Shawn Michaels and that Shawn Michaels is just SSD. And that Shawn Michaels is the baby face. Now we can see, all right, this is where he becomes a legit heel. So it's brilliant. Have him do something that's really good, and then throw in the cutoff point. That is some smart-ass writing. We're not going to get that kind of shit right now. Like, we're going to get some stupid shit where, let's say, John Cena is trying to say that he based his career off trying to be like The Rock, or Austin, or Hogan. They, they wouldn't pull it off. They wouldn't pull off that, you, I'm inspired to be like you thing. Just as good as this. Because they don't know how to do that thing where you got to relate a little to the heel. But then you got to have something to make you despise and make you go boo. The heel making this person seem like well, little baby face like he's such a great guy. And then doing this shit. So there we go. Brilliant fucking writing. The Rock concert where you know what? Instead of been talking about music so long, he did, he did a good job here too. I mean, he's not a killer guitar player. He's not gonna shred on it, but nigga knew what he was doing. As opposed to when Austin picks up a guitar to be funny and ironic, and he sucks as hell, especially with the singing. Rock was doing a lot of good shit. He was basically very impressive. Like, because he can, like, play live just with a guitar and, and his voice and improvise. And, well, Rock's not 
an improvising, improvising guy. He's like, he does little things here and there. So, that's impressive. You gotta admit, for any performer, that's like, really cool. Like, just winging it like that. And then Austin comes in. He kind of uses the ambulance to, like, drive in. And then the security... And basically uses, like, the Hurricane who beat the Rock as a bait and switch. Hurricane comes out from the car and then Rock says, Hey, security, arrest this guy's ass. Feeling confident because he was so scared when Austin's Titantron and music came out that he was like, Oh, um, is, Rock, uh, is Austin going to kick my ass? But no, it wasn't him. It was the fucking Hurricane. And then after the security escorts the Hurricane out, then the rock went, is like, you know, I'm going to diss Austin some more since I feel so confident. And that's when Austin comes out from those black covers and he's ready to kick some ass. As soon as the rock realizes what's happening, he bolts out. Too late though, Austin basically breaks his fucking guitar. And it's on like Donkey Kong, his Willie Nelson guitar. Alright, I'm feeling it. Uh, going to the previous SmackDown before that week, we had a promo between Vince McMahon and The Under... No, The Undertaker. Vince McMahon and Hogan. Basically, Vince is doing a promo against Hulk Hogan, saying that, Alright, I created Hulkamania, so I'm gonna fucking kill it. But before that, it's like, no, I'm getting mixed up. I'm getting fucking mixed up. Because keep in mind, I saw this raw, how many days ago? I saw this on Thursday, and this is Monday, so. Wrong fucking promo. This was a promo where Hogan's talking some shit about Vince, saying, look, Hulkamania couldn't have happened without me, and then Vince attacks him from the back. Hogan wasn't expecting it, though. Hogan was, like, expecting it to happen, like, Vince coming up from up front. He didn't know that he was going to come from behind him, so he got his ass kicked. It sucked to be him. I've noticed that 03 and 02, basically, Hogan was putting over people. He was putting other people over. However... Let's contrast that between him, 2005, 2007, where he was shitting on everyone. Well, he had a he had to do put some people over, and he had to look strong while and come out winning while making other people look strong. Otherwise, Hogan would look like a joke. We don't want Hulkamania to look dead. We want to remind people what people liked Hulk Hogan in the first place. So. All I gotta say is that Vince did a really good job as a heel and Hogan as a face. These guys are meant to face each other since they've known each other for so long so they know each other's ups and downs and how to deal with each other. So there's that good contrast, 20 years in the making. 20 years in the making meaning that there's 20 years where these people get to know each other. They need to know how to like deal with each other. It's gonna make for a great feud. His best friends make most bitter enemies anyway. The most bitter enemies. I hope you enjoyed this fucking review. This is Mr. Rock is 7. You guys have been waiting for this? Suck my dick, niggas. I'm out.